In this video, we're going to be training in the quadruped position with variations beginning in the low quadruped or dog in the host position, progressing all the way up towards a full prone six month position, which can be used as an alternative for planking. The purpose of this video is to train trunk and pelvic stabilization with movement of the hip and the shoulder joints. The first position we're going to be using in this progression is going to begin in the, here in the low quadruped or the dog in the house position. But before we begin, we have to establish our points of support and how to upright the body into a neutral position. So beginning with hand support, you want to make sure that when your hands are on the ground, that you feel full contact of the palm uh, on the ground through the hypothenar pad, the thenar pad, all the way to the tip of the thumb and across the metacarpal heads. When your hand is on the ground, make sure the thumb isn't flexed, but is fully on the ground. The middle finger points straight forward, the fingers are spread. Next, you want to have the shoulder rotated in a slightly externally rotated position. Now, you know your shoulder is positioned correctly if the pit of the elbow or the crease of the elbow is pointing in the same direction that your thumb is pointing. From there, we bring the shoulders back down away from the ears and the head pulls back to be in line with, with the rest of the body. Now, we don't want to see the head coming up into extension, but we want to have proper activation of the deep neck flexors so the chin tucks while the head is lifting. Next, support is also being provided by the shins. So you want to make sure the shins are always firmly on the ground. Quite often we see in pathological activation patterns, the hamstrings are doing a lot of work. And so when a person is transitioning from this position forward, you'll literally see the hamstrings pulling the shins off the ground. So since the shin is providing support, they need to be remaining on the ground all the time. So from here, we want to see her again, pull the head back. So literally she's pulling the ponytail up towards the ceiling while maintaining a chin tuck. We want to make sure the chest is always relaxed. Proper stabilization is reflexive. And if a person is generating a lot of tension through the chest or gripping in the abdominal wall, they're going to short circuit their natural ability to create proper stabilization and re rely on a tension strategy instead, which is incredibly inefficient and pathological. So the chest remains relaxed. She's spreading the chest and the shoulders as wide as she can, externally rotating her shoulders, bringing the, the uh, crease of the elbow in line with the thumb, head pulls back. She's going to gently tuck the tailbone down towards her support. And from there, we should already start to feel pressure building in the abdominal canister. We don't want the pressure to be out the front, but through the entire abdominal canister. If I put my hands in here, I need to feel equal pressure on both sides, front and back as well. She's going to maintain breathing through here. Now what she wants to feel as she's pressing her shins into the table and she's going to be catching herself with her hands, literally feeling like she's trying to stretch the table, stretch the surface uh, um, that, that she's on. And while she's pressing, she's lifting her body up towards the ceiling, feeling like she's trying to pull herself forward. So we're creating length in the body. She's going to push herself up in towards my hand through her head, creating a proper activation through the abdominal wall. And now she's just going to breathe into, into that position. We don't want to see the shoulders protracting around. So we don't want to see the shoulders coming around the side of the body like that. That's a very inappropriate pattern, but we want to see neutral position of the shoulder blades. So they're pulling back away from the head and she's pulling her chest away from her hands, not pushing her elbows together, creating a lot of pec activation, but literally just trying to lift herself up towards the ceiling. Chest stays relaxed, 
head pulls back, lifting up into my hand. Now we can create a little more of a challenge for her by having her reach forward with one of her hands. And the normal pattern would be external rotation of the shoulder with pronation at the forearm as if she's grasping for something. And then maintaining uprighting and proper breathing. And then bringing the hand back down and reaching again. Nice slow movements in the anticipated fashion. Really breathing through the abdominal canister and back down. The next progression would be to come from the low quadruped position into a proper quadruped position. So from there, she's just going to walk her hands forward just a little bit. And same, same uh, quality of support through the hand correctly, externally rotating the shoulders, pulling the shoulders apart and away from the ears, maintaining her support through her shins. Now again, she's going to push through her shins. She's going to catch that, that push with her hands and feel like she's levitating up towards the ceiling through the entire body, trunk and head as she comes up and forward. And when she's doing that, I don't want to see a humping up in the thoracic spine or a swing in the lower spine. So this is quite often what we'll see is people humping their back as they're trying to create stability. They're basically overactivating the, the erectus abdominis, creating a flexion pattern. So we want to see a neutral trunk position and connection with uh, the chest to the shoulder blades. We also want to make sure that we're in a neutral position in the lower back. We don't want to see that happening. So while she is coming forward, she's always pulling her tailbone towards her base of support at the shins. I want to feel her back coming into my fingers here without creating, again, that curvature position. So always neutral, pressing through the shins, lifting through the head, literally feel like she's trying to pull her spine as long as she can. She's not moving, but she's pulling herself straight, using her core to create postural activation. Now from here, again, she can go ahead and reach with one arm in the same, same fashion. External rotation of the shoulder, pronation at the elbow, and bringing it back down. The idea is to reach without creating a retraction of the shoulder blade. So another strategy people have is when they go to reach with the arm, you'll literally see the shoulder blade retract back like this. If they're lacking proper stability, um, that through the posterior chain, when they go to reach, you'll also see, go ahead and reach for me, please. You also see the chest tend to drop down like this. So we want to see um, level through here, long neutral spine as she goes ahead and reaches one more time. Perfect. Back down. And next we can create a phasic movement of the lower extremity as well. So here, she's, as she begins to move this leg, she has to ensure she has proper support through this hand and through this leg. So she's going to be pressing her shin into the ground, uprighting through her head, pressurizing through here, and she's going to begin to move this leg forward and back and forward again and back and when she's doing that we don't want to see the pelvis shifting to the side nor do we want to see it dropping down we also want to make sure that the chest isn't dropping down and towards an open scissors pattern like that so we're creating a connection between the trunk and the pelvis with creating leg movement so one more time sliding the leg back on the back of your foot and pulling the knee forward again and back again nice and slow alternating movements like that so that's some basic movements in the quadruped position next we're going to have her move her hands forward about a foot and from there we're going to move towards the full uh, prone six-month position now when people are moving forward 
they will have the tendency to lose stability of the pelvis. So as their body is moving forward, we need to make sure the pelvis stays neutral and moving around the hip joints. So the spine doesn't move, it's the hip joints and the shoulder joints that are moving. So she's gonna be lifting up towards the ceiling and then transitioning forward, pushing through her shins. I don't wanna see the shins be unweighted here. She's coming forward and she's holding that neutral pelvic position, operating through her head. And ideally, we're gonna have a straight line from the knee, through the shoulder, through the ear. Bringing the hip into a proper neutral position while holding neutral pelvic and trunk position as well. And then she's going to transition back to quadruped. And then come back forward towards the prone six month position again. lifting up through the head and with proper activation of the abdominal wall I can apply a fair amount of pressure to her pelvis and she's resisting me quite stable in this position and again watching the support function of the legs and the hands and the shoulders pulling up she's going to lift her chest away from me a little bit and breathing into her abdominal canister and then back to quadruped again and there you have it. We have a variety of movements in the quadruped position, training trunk stabilization, pel pelvic stabilization while moving through the hips and the shoulders. Thank you.